the sun will come out tomorrow Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun When I'm stuck in a day that's gray and lonely I just stick out my chin and grin and say Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you Tomorrow, you're only a day away I think that song captures my mood and it captures the mood of everyone right now, including the Pantone Institute who chose Ultimate Gray and Illuminating Yellow for their colors of 2021. And I can't think of two more perfect colors to represent 2021 because we all just came out of so many gray days and there's still a lot of gray days, but there's yellow on the horizon. There's light at the end of the tunnel. There's hope. There's better days coming. Let immerse ourselves in art, talk some shop about some new colors I'm trying out, and then splash around to create three easy, fast, abstract paintings. I am going to send out my quarterly paint dots to my Patreon students, and the four colors that I chose include Cadmium Yellow Pale by Windsor & Newton, Lamp Black by Daniel Smith, Indian Yellow by Daniel Smith, and one of Schmincke's new super granulating paints called Deep Sea Black. And later in this video, I'll explain to you more in depth about these colors. To test them out, I'll complete three different small, very quick, very easy, but to me, exhilarating abstracts. Abstracts are my secret guilty artist pleasure. They are complete raw fun because there are no rules and you can literally just play with paint often with beautiful results because you're painting just for the effect of watercolor. Instead of painting for the effect of a subject like a cat or dog, which naturally puts limits on what you can and can't do with paint. So let's briefly first talk about what the Pantone color of the year is. It is a color chosen each year by a company based on trend analysis to decide what colors designers and decor companies should focus on for 2021. So let's have a little fun with these colors and try out some new paints in the process. There are a variety of reasons why I chose these colors. For those of you who follow me on my watercolor adventures, Lately, I've been exploring the magical property of diffusion, which I describe in my video that's just about diffusion, so I'll link it here. But basically, it's how much a paint blossoms once it touches wet paper. I've been using this property of watercolor to paint my black cats and fluffy bunnies and calico cats too with long, fluffy fur. So I've been testing out a lot of blacks. I chose Daniel Smith Lent Black because it doesn't have as much of a drying shift or lightning when it dries as much as my old trusty standby Windsor & Newton Lamp Black. Also, it has, according to handprint.com, the highest rating for diffusion, so of course I had to buy it and try it out. I chose Schmincke Deep Sea Black just out of pure excitement of Schmincke offering this new line of super granulating paints that was just recently released. So I bought this little expensive tube for the good of my students and my own curiosity. It's a convenience mix of lunar black, cerulean, and cobalt blue. Now let's talk about why I chose my yellows. I'm always looking for a good yellow, and while I have been quite happy with my Holbein Oriolan, I'm still open to trying new ones. And I am glad I did, because as you'll see in this video, Daniel Smith Indian Yellow is spectacular. I originally bought Cadmium Yellow Pale because it was described as a good primary color, which means it mixes well with both blue and red, and is said to have an intense chroma. At the time, I was working on a limited palette zebra painting where I just used three primaries to paint all the colors of the rainbow, so be sure to check out that video. I'll link it here. I chose Daniel Smith Indian Yellow because handprint.com said that the hue of PY108 made by Daniel Smith was one he would recommend. But then when I went to do deeper research for this video, I took a closer look at the pigment in my tube of Indian Yellow and they were completely different than what handprint showed. My tube has a mix of PY97 and PY150. PY97, or Hansa Yellow, is a light, bright, intense yellow, and PY150, 
or nickel azomethane is described as sunny and intense intense. It is described as one of the most transparent yellows available. What a happy mistake because I fell in love painting with it in my abstracted exercises. Let's put these colors to work and see what they do. I am going to place each of these colors in this little smaller palette here so that you guys can kind of keep track of where I'm getting the paint from. And this first color that I'm putting in is cadmium yellow. So whenever you see me picking up something from that tray right there, you know it's cadmium yellow pale. And the next color will be my Indian yellow. So whenever you see me picking up yellow from that tray, you know it's Indian yellow. And this is my lamp black and it will get its own little tray, of course. So whenever I pick up paint from that third tray down, that will be lamp black. And last but not least is the Schmincke Deep Sea Black, which is a combination, like I said, of cerulean, cobalt, and lunar black, which is a very granulating, almost too granulating. And here are some brushes I'm going to use. I'm going to paint on hot press first. And I'm going to use mostly my squared off brushes uh, because uh, just the style that I chose to do my abstracts in. And when you're painting abstracts, you want to remember you want to create a lot of variety. You want some, in this case of what I'm painting, which is basically stripes. You want some wide ones and some thin ones, and you want some wet ones and some dry brushed ones. And of course, a lot of different colors in each one to make them more interesting, but not too many different colors. You don't want it to get jarring, but you'll see what I do. And it's fairly, the way that I paint these is fairly uh, just off the cuff. I don't have a plan. I'm just enjoying the process, having fun, watching these paints interact especially the granulating paint, I was curious to see. And one trick that you want to keep in mind when you're using granulating paints to maximize the granulating aspect of these paints, they need a lot of water to move around. So here I painted some clear water first and I'm going in with that cadmium yellow pale. It's a lighter yellow, not as in your face. It's a more gentle, delicate yellow. And here I'm just mixing up some color. And I'm keeping it really watery, but that was too watery. So I'm mixing more of that granulating schminky deep sea paint, and I'm gonna add a little bit more. And like I said, the name of the game with this granulating paint is to add plenty of water to it so that the granulation can really take effect better. It won't granulate out as much if you paint dry on dry or with too thick a paint. It needs a lot of water to move around, which makes sense. So I'm just randomly putting down colors, putting down some black and just playing, letting these colors interact. Okay, now here's the Indian yellow. So let's see what that looks like. I found that this yellow was a lot brighter. It really does remind me of sunshine. It's just gorgeous. I really enjoyed painting with this color. And I'm using it close to cream consistency here to kind of offset the more watery swatches that I've put down. And then I'm letting them kind of mix and mingle together here and there just to do their own watercolor thing. I try to get out of the way of the paints interacting together, but I really did enjoy that part of this painting process, just watching these paints interact together. There goes some lamp black and you can see how much darker it is than the schminky granulating paint. It's it's designed to be dark, to stay dark, to be nice and thick, like a dark night at midnight. It's just really a striking, strong color, and I really like it. I don't think it diffuses as much as my Windsor Newton Latin Black, but it is a powerful black, and that's really nice because a problem with most black paints is they have a big drying shift which means they dry a lot lighter than what you painted them on. And this lamp black is probably the nicest black as far as drying shift that I've experienced. It stays dark even when it dries. So that's something I really like about this particular brand of lamp black.
You can see I'm just using scraps of paper, just whatever I have. For some of these, I painted on the back of a painting that I didn't like. The big one will be on fluid paper. This right here is going to be cold press. So I tried three different papers. The first one you just saw was hot press. This is going to be cold press. And the next one will be the fluid watercolor paper. So there I painted, uh, instead of putting down clear water like I did on the first one, there I just painted wet on dry. And I love the little texture that you get at the end of the stroke. I think that's extremely attractive and just adds to the beauty of the painting. There goes some lamp black right there. Look how much it diffuses. You can just see it dance across the paper as it gets placed in the water. More so than the other ones. There's that beautiful Indian yellow. Just, it just sings. It's just so bright, so beautiful, so filled with hope. And you can see another thing that I'm trying to do as an effective abstract painter is to paint some long stripes, some short ones, some smaller ones, some longer ones, and keep the variety of the length of the line that I paint different to add interest to the painting. But I'm not imposing too many rules on myself. I'm more just doing this to enjoy watching these colors mix together. And there goes some lamp black right there. And interact together. And I got some beautiful textures. Some of the stripes, I let them go completely off the side of the page. And I let some of the stripes touch each other and let the colors in each intermingle. And sometimes what I will do is put down a milk to tea consistency brush full and then go in with some cream consistency paint. Just you can, the sky's the limit. Your creative creativity is really the only thing that limits you as far as trying out different combinations of paint consistencies and colors to see how they interact and affect each other. This is a perfect way to experiment with that. There goes a dark lamp black. You know it's lamp black when you see the brush stroke really dark like that. Again, if you just want to keep these feeling really experimental and carefree, one of the ways you can do that is to paint on the back of your paintings. You can paint on the back of fluid paper. You can paint on the back of Arch's Arch cold press paper. You can paint on the back of Arch hot press paper. All right, here is my fluid piece of paper, and I'm sorry, some of it will go off screen because it's such a big piece of paper. It's 16 by 16. This was my favorite painting outcome of the three. And this fluid paper really allows the paint to interact on the surface and the granulation and the feathering and the diffusion and the cauliflowers really were heightened, I feel like, by this paper. So it was a lot of fun. Again, this piece of fluid paper is 16 by 16, I believe. And I'm getting a super wide brush over there, but I think I abandoned it because it, it was hard to pick up paint the way I had my palette. But I'm painting some big clear stripes, big wide clear stripes with the widest brush I own. If you don't have the exact brushes I have, just use what you have enjoy what you have and don't worry about it too much and just enjoy watching these paints interact together. All right, I'm letting the paint even mix a little bit there on my palette. And I'm going to put some big, bold, cadmium yellow pale stripes there. Again, not really having a plan in my mind, more just enjoying the process. And there's Indian yellow. You can see it's a slightly different color than the cadmium yellow pale. It's bolder, it's brighter, less pastel, more sunshine, which we could all use a little sunshine right now, can't we? All right, now I'm mixing up some schminky 
deep sea. Getting plenty mixed and I'm going in. That brush there that I'm working with is about an inch wide, flat. Ooh, look at it diffuse. Oh, isn't that fun to just watch it? Ooh, look at that one. <laughs> That's why I love abstracts. There I'm going in with lamp black. Now, that schminky really actually diffused beautifully, didn't it? And now that lamp black is being kind of still. It's not diffusing as powerfully. So that's interesting. But this fluid paper really lets you see that um, diffusion happen right in front of your eyes. And it's just so fun. I could not stop. <laughs> it's just, and there's a thin racing stripe of lamp black to add variety and a darkness, darker value than what the schminky allows. See, see how the schminky, it's beautiful and the granulation is beautiful, but it's definitely a lighter in value gray. You're not going to get a, a dark black with it like you do with the lamp black, unless you almost paint with it straight from the tube. And you shouldn't. You need to add a lot of water to it to uh, enhance the granulating effect it was designed for anyway. It's, that's, it's not designed to be a dark black. It's designed to be a granulating, interesting black gray. But I really liked putting the um, cream consistency uh, lamp black racing stripe in some of these stripes and then letting it feather out into the painting. I thought that was a really pretty effect too. And I just love watching the water and the paint interact in and of themselves without much help from me. Here I'm going out in with a wrung out brush. I was getting puddles at this point because I had used so much water because I really wanted the granulation to have a chance to granulate. So I used puddling water in some places and, and here after I get all my colors on, I go in and dab up some of those puddles that happen in the corners and on the sides of the stripes. Getting some more Indian yellow. I'm going to put some, bam, some sunshine in this painting. So I'm painting wet into wet now. And I'm just going to let these colors dance together. All I do is put them down and then let them do their thing. And then just watch them. It's so fun. So rewarding. I just love this about abstract painting. I could do abstracts and be happy and never paint another realistic painting again. And that might disappoint some of you, but it, they're just so fun and it's just so free. It's just a joy to paint them. I don't know why it exhilarates me to watch the paints do their watercolor thing, but I sure enjoy it. Do you see how I have a variety of lines? Some thin racing stripes, some fat, thick, wide yellow stripes. Then I put in an inch wide of the deep sea with a watery texture. So I just try to keep everything varied and that will make for a more interesting, visually appealing abstract painting. You don't want to have equal stripes going all the way across the page for the most part. That will be less interesting. You want or if you did have stripes going across the page, because I've seen paintings like this in galleries and things where everything is equal, but then the colors within them are really varied. So you want to vary them somehow, either with color or with value or with shape and or with shape and or with color and or with value. And then as this is entering the buckling stage, as it's drying and I'm getting to the cauliflower stage, I put thin wisps thin lines of clear water in to see if I can make some long, thin um, corn, what am I trying to say? Cauliflower, not corn, cauliflower effects with a rigger. So that was a rigger full of clean, clear water that I applied in a stripe here and there in my painting as the paintings in the buckling stage. Look how fast this was and how beautiful the results are. Isn't that just so wonderful? <laughs> That's why I love abstracts. I would totally frame this and hang it in my house. All right, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed these three abstract paintings. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you. Tomorrow, you're only a day away.
and be sure to subscribe. I upload a new video every week and I will see you guys next week. Okay, thanks so much, you guys. Do you want to say bye bye, kitty? Ow! <laughs> I love you, little kitty. Bye, you guys.